Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We have a new style of content for you today and I wanna know if you like it. So drop a comment down below if you find this valuable or insightful or what have you. I have Mark Zemanski on the channel. He is a creator, has his own YouTube channel. I will link to it down below. And effectively, Mark is a Elementor refugee. He's coming from the Elementor ecosystem. And we're not picking on Elementor. It could be Divi, it could be Beaver Builder. Uh, but basically going from one of those kind of like beginner level page builders to a more professional page builder like bricks or oxygen or quickly, you know, rest in peace. Um, and so he's got a lot of questions. He's got a lot of challenges that he's running into, the, you know, new concepts like a class first workflow and BIM and using a framework like automatic CSS for the first time. It just presents a lot of questions and challenges. And I was watching him work through on his channel, some of his stuff running into these challenges and having these questions. So I invited him on the channel and I said, hey, let's just do this together. I think it would be very helpful for lots of people. And he was down for it. And so here we are. Uh, watch, enjoy. And if you find this valuable and want to see more of it, maybe if you want us to do a little series out of this, let me know down below. Here we go. All right. I'm here with Mark and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. What What is... Uh... What's first on the list, Mark? What are we going to tackle first? Oh, man, it's a big list. Well, I appreciate you doing this, Kevin. Thank you so much, man. I think it's going to be great for, uh, definitely going to be great for me. Hopefully it's great for your viewers as well. Um, so, I mean, yes, yeah, short, short blurb about me though. I'm, I'm, as you mentioned in the, you know, the live stream the other day and all that, uh, I'm coming from Elementor. So like I've been using Elementor since like 2018, watched a lot of your content, watched a lot of other creators content, and realized that I want kind of, I, in order to scale a little bit, I want to go bricks and obviously have ACSS and frames in my stack now. Uh, watch PB 101, fantastic. Can't thank you enough for that. And now I'm kind of just like, you know, with, you know, with this chat with you is kind of just kind of, I think the biggest thing that I want to, I think would be great here is to kind of double down and understand the efficiency of your workflow and how certain things um, kind of operate and all that sort of stuff. And uh, again, I'm just kind of still a noob. So I think there's a lot to, to kind of be uh, learned there. Um, I mean, sure. if you want to just dive into it, um, I mean, it's just kind of like a general like overview and visualization of like BEM, I think would be like a really good place to start perhaps. I know it's block element modifier methodology and everything like yep. that. But at a high level, when I'm building a page out and I'm using like sections, containers, blocks, divs, I think just kind of best practices on like when to use, obviously sections make sense, but can like containers blocks. And then when you're actually naming them like that, that BEM methodology to summarize, you make it seem so simple to get to the point where you click the auto BIM button. And I'm just like yeah. kind of lost there in that workflow. So that's a lot there, but I think that's kind of a good place to kind of, to kind okay. of start. Cool. All right. So I think, um, it's best when uh, people have, cause I, I, I show examples, right. Where it's, it's very uh, abstract and it's kind of like, here's this thing that I made. And sometimes it is a simple little card. Right. But then what happens is people get into a real project and the project, the page is a little bit more complicated than what I showed in the example in the video. Right. And that's where they get stuck and lost and all of that. So, and I saw you were working on a real project uh, dashboard the other day on video. So if you want to like pull that up as an example, and then we can go like, maybe you can show me part of the page where it was like, all right, this is where I got stuck, like naming this thing. Um, and, sure. and how does it work here? For sure. Okay. Can you see this? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, yeah, this was just a simple dashboard design. Um, and I think you had even made a comment on this because in the, in the video, when I was displaying this, I had some like the spacing issues and there's some other questions we could probably tackle as we go through this. So for instance, yeah. like right off the bat though, in kind of like a setup of ACSS and everything. I noticed that you have videos where you're going over different things and then you're, you know, like you said, you're making cards and all that. Stu like a stupid, simple question is, do you ever use the contextual spacing? Like the, or like the auto spacing and everything like that between grids, between containers, between contents? Like, is there a reason to use that? Is there when and not to use that? Like, cause that yeah. messes me up just cause, you know. Auto automatic spacing I have turned on on every build. So every project has auto spacing on. Okay. Uh, and what you're going to find is that it, uh, so you, you combine smart spacing with auto spacing. So w when you go into the ACSS dashboard, you turn on smart spacing. Uh, 
And what that does is effectively it gets rid of all default spacing. So like browsers will auto space, like they'll add margins to headings and paragraphs and things like that. And a lot of times in like those card layouts that you were showing, yeah, if you go to, um, yeah, scroll down and you'll, you'll find smart spacing. Yeah. It's under typography is uh, smart spacing. Uh, okay. Click the typography okay. tab and scroll down. Yep. Gotcha. So you, right you normally turn this on? Turn that on for sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's a super important thing to turn on, uh, especially if now go back to your layout. Okay. So those kinds of cards like that, you typically want even spacing. And even if you don't Certainly. want fully even spacing, maybe some people like the button to have a little bit more space above it than the other things. But for the most part, it's even spacing. What you don't want is you don't want to add a gap to the card, which is going to like basically create space between every element and then also have the browser like, well, that's a paragraph. So I'm going to add even more and that's a heading. So I'm going to add even different one to that. And then, so the browser is trying to do all this stuff and it's like, no, 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 thank you. Like I will, I will dictate my spacing. And so when you turn on smart spacing, it's going to remove all those user agent styles and basically put everything at zero. And so everything will touch each other. And then if you add a gap, the gap will make even spacing between all items. So that's super helpful, very, very handy. Uh, and then you can still use margins within there. So if you, if you need something to be uneven, you can always make it uneven. It doesn't stop you from having uneven spacing, but it gives you even spacing out of the box if you want it, right? Uh, now, when you add auto spacing on that, it's just you don't have to do the step of constantly adding spacing at every turn. Now, in bricks... Uh, we stopped at blocks, okay? So a section will have a, an auto gap between all the containers in the section. And then inside of those containers, there will be auto gaps between the content. But if you add a block in the container, then we don't auto space that yet. But we are gonna add a switch for that because uh, I do think it's, we when we initially added auto spacing, we're like, how far should we take it? And we actually didn't, we were, trying to be safe and trying to be careful. And so we didn't take it far enough. Now we've realized, oh yeah, we can actually, let's go further with that. Uh, so there will be auto spacing in blocks. That is exactly the thing. When I was learning, first learning about ACSS, when I was even more of a noob, I the first thing that I realized was I went in here and I went to spacing mm -hmm. and I turned all these on and it, it seems like it, it gives you kind of like a little, you know, like you said, like, you know, automatically add the contextual spacing. So you don't have to have, you know, you don't have to mess with that as much. Yes. And then immediately I was like, well, wait a minute. And I think that even happens like on this project. Like if we go to like, you know, you go section, the whole mm -hmm. thing's a section currently, and then you go container and then you go block. And yep. so this is a block here. And I was like, immediately I was having an issue where I want to add this spacing and I want it to kind of be automatic. But what I did in the, in the bricks templates, or I'm sorry, in like the bricks theme styles um, for a while, I put, in block, I put a minimum, I, or I put a variable in column and row gap of like, I think it was content gap, if that's the one that makes sense. Or yep. just like, it's, I feel like, is Probably that kind of the same yeah. thing? Uh, it's, yeah, so you can, you can do that. Unfortunately, Bricks uses too much specificity to do that. So all of our automatic spacing uses zero specificity. So you can override it with anything. A utility class, like, you know, this, the order of the style sheets doesn't matter. Um, but bricks adds specificity when you do that. So I believe if you put like content gap variable in your blocks by default, and then you try to use like a grid gap utility class from automatic CSS or something like that, or even like gap none or something like that to get rid of the gap, they're not gonna work. Bricks is gonna override the utility classes because there's too much specificity. So I avoid that. Uh, I don't, I don't use hardly the only thing I do in here mm -hmm. is the element container, uh, setting it to the content width of the website. Yeah. Just like yeah, I did, I, I, I did. <laughs> literally the only thing I do, I don't touch okay. anything else in there. Um, um, and do you do font uh, fonts and stuff too, or whatever? I just Maybe. do fonts. Yes. But yeah. not, yeah. Like the actual font families, but none of the font styling or anything like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So another random question as we go through this is this is something that I struggle with, especially from coming from a just pure ID styling workflow and, you know, Elementor and all that is every time I've watched you watch a ton of your content, every time I've watched you create cards or page layouts or anything, you are doing this where you, you drop in all the elements mm -hmm. 
and you get the structure, I feel like kind of laid out, but not like you're not styling the structure. You're not, you know, putting the, the grid and all that on there. You're just getting like, literally like heading text button icon, whatever. And right. then you go and you, and at that point you hit the auto BEM button because all of your stuff is in there and everything's labeled. And then you, you do that. So I want to talk about that process, but before we talk about that is, is it, I, I don't know if I've ever seen you style anything without it having a custom class on it. Like, mm -hmm. is that, is that like, would you recommend that? Like, is there ever a time where you should not have a custom class on something? Um, it, it's a matter of like, do you really need to have a custom class on something? Uh, mm -hmm. so for example, if you are building a header and you're in your header template, you know, you mm -hmm. could make an argument and say, well, we don't need to use classes here. The reason why we don't need to use classes here is because we're working within a templated component, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're going to apply this thing to every page, but there's only one instance of it, right? That one instance is the source of truth for all the other instances. And that's really what a class is doing is it's creating a singular instance of styling that applies to a gazillion different elements, right? Well, if you already have some other functionality that creates the multiple instances, in this case, like a header template or a footer template, you don't necessarily need the classes. Uh, but in Page Building 101, like the principle when I was talking about BIM is when in doubt, BIM it out, right? So you can't go wrong by adding custom classes and then styling the custom classes. You just, you maybe did a little extra work, but with auto BIM, how much extra work did you really do? Like it's just a couple of clicks. So there's really no downside uh, to using custom classes. And what I found is beginners, especially, uh, they will think like, ooh, I probably don't need a custom, and, but they don't really aren't like, they're, they don't have enough experience to realize, no, you really do need custom classes there. So if they just follow a process of like, I'm gonna add a custom class to everything, they're not really going to go wrong, right? Unless they're just naming everything wrong. But uh, it, it is a good practice to just do it by default. And then as you gain experience, you'll run into the scenarios where you're like, I know for sure I don't have to use a custom class here because I'm working within a template or whatever. When components come to bricks, this is another situation where perhaps we can start to move away from, uh, you know, bimifying everything. Uh, there's also, I'm actually going to do a video on this. There's something called scope coming to CSS scope is actually going to potentially just fully replace the need for BIM uh, and make life a lot easier. So uh, I'll, I'll let people wait for the video on that. But short answer is you can't go wrong by adding the custom classes. Let's talk about then that all makes sense. There's a lot of clarity there. I, I guess, I guess maybe some of the times the, the thing that might end up happening with me <clears throat> is that I feel like I'm, and maybe I'm overcomplicating, I'm getting like stuck between seeing this maybe on a design mm -hmm. and then getting to the point where I can feel confident about like, okay, I've got all my pieces in here. I can hit the auto BIM button. Cause I feel like I'm almost, I, I feel like in the past I've wanted to start styling too early because it was all at the yeah. ID level. And right. now it's just a different workflow. And I, I would like to be as efficient as possible. So auto BIM 2.0, you're going to be able to style everything at the ID level. So you can just play around. It's like, let me just, let me just add things. Let me just play around with it. And then when you auto BIM it and create the classes, it'll just pull those styles from the ID and assign them to the classes on that element, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You can play at the ID level, which is super fast and you don't have to worry about naming anything and you don't have to worry about really much of anything other than what you're building and what it looks like uh, and how it's structured. And then when you auto BIM it, it's just gonna take all that mess and organize it in custom classes. And it's gonna copy those styles over seamlessly. So that's going to be fun and exciting. Um, now, if, you, if you're doing it in the world we exist in now, where that feature doesn't exist, um, let's, for example, let's just build that Hello uh, Mark Zemanski card, right? So do you want to just redo this one or you want to try to redo this thing as a section? This two, you know let's just, I mean? yeah, let's do, the, let's do that whole container. So both of, like literally both of those cards. Um, and cool. what I would call that thing on the right is a CTA card because um, yeah. you're, you're asking somebody to apply to something. And that's a very common pattern, this icon, heading, text, button, mm -hmm. card situation. Uh, yeah. So you would want something called a CTA card on your website that allows you to put any content in there, but it's styled exactly like that, right? So yeah. um, this is a situation though, being that we're working in a dashboard and it's a, a template, I guess. Um, all we have to do is use for the grid aspect, you can just use a utility class. You can just use your grid too uh, on the container. That's yeah. gonna put those side by side. 
we'll look past my microphone like you always have to do here. Anyway. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. And so on the left, we're going to, and I, I do highly recommend that like before people make classes, and this is actually what is good about auto BIM, um, before you make any classes, organize, label everything in the structure panel. Cause you, you mm -hmm. should just do that. Any, even if you're not using BIM, you're not using class, like you should just organize your structure panel. Um, so let's just call that, um, you know, a, a hello card or a, a person card or a bio card or like whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we'll call that a CTA card. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So in our hello card, what we're gonna, I, you know, I just teach people to think in boxes, right? So you have effectively what is looks like a header, like the hello, and then your name are grouped together in like a, a what we'll call a header, right? Um, so we'll put a block in for that. And the reason I'm doing block instead of div here is because the block is already set to display flex and it's already going to be 100% wide. So it's just a little bit of a shortcut. You could mm -hmm. absolutely use a div, but then you're going to have to set it to flex, you know, yourself and yada, yada, yada. Um, okay, then you have the contact info section. Um, that's going to be another block in itself. So that's two grouped items, at minimum two grouped items. Um, and then you're going to have the websites at the bottom. So we'll add a block for that. Mm -hmm. And then I would just name these, right? So, um, the, the top block you can name header and then the second block you can name, uh, I would, I would probably use something generic. So just use body wrapper or something. Yeah. I mean, how, and talk me through that real quick. Cause I, one of my things in my notes was I am absolutely atrocious at naming, labeling yeah. all these things. I mean, does that just come with time? Like what, what, it how does, are you yeah. actually making these decisions? That's just an experience. It's just an experience thing. And then sometimes you'll be like, man, that's a shitty name. And then you'll want to, <laughs> you'll want to redo it. And thankfully a, a page builder like bricks allows you to rename classes, which not a lot of builders do like oxygen. You can't rename classes in oxygen. So you're, you're stuck with your shitty decision unless you want to make the new class copy styles from the old, like you got to do a bunch of manual uh, jumping through hoops. Bricks makes it very easy to just correct your mistakes. So it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. Right. Um, and then that one, I would just call the websites wrapper or something. Okay. Um, and then you're going to go up to your header and now we're just going to drop the two things that we need in there, which is text and a heading. Uh, and I would, the only thing I do is I just put the heading first, right? So heading and then text. You, All right. How, and how do you, how do you ever decide on, I mean, I know what the difference between basic uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is, but yeah, how do you question. ever decide? Single line or single paragraph can be basic text. If it's ever going to be more than one paragraph, it's got to be rich. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. So then I would call the basic text thing, the, um, you know, the intro, it seems like, you know, the hello, that's just like an intro thing. Uh, then the heading, the heading can be the heading, the heading can be the person's name, you know, it could be whatever you want. Okay. Uh, then in the body wrapper, we are going to, now this is where you make a decision, right? So that pencil, that pencil thing, you know, what are we going to do with that? We could put an icon element in, we could also use a pseudo element for that icon. Uh, that's not a selectable thing. It's not, there's no real accessibility stuff at play here. Um, in fact, we, we probably don't want a screen reader to read that because it's just decorative, right? It's just a cute little thing. Well, uh, I actually made it, I made, I made it a clickable thing that they could go. Oh, is it clickable? Stuff. Oh, that one's yeah, clickable. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. Well that now that raises a whole new can hmm. of worms. Okay. We can make it simpler for the for, no, no, no. We know, episode one. To, no, no, no. We need to make it, we need to make it mm -hmm. clickable. Uh, because okay. this, this presents the, uh, now we have to do it a certain way for the most part. Okay. okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to put in another div. We're going to, we can just use a div this time. Uh, because I'll just, just for shits and giggles, we'll just show people the difference. So you can put a div in and inside that div, you don't even have to, don't even worry about naming it right now. We'll name it in a minute. Uh, put in text and then, uh, an icon and and in fact, what we're, what we're going to want to do now, we could do this one of two ways. So that icon, an icon that is a link cannot just exist by itself because that's not accessible because the screener it's not, it has no idea what that thing is, right? So you need either an, an ARIA label attached to that, which is going to describe what the link is to a screen reader, or you need hidden text inside that's going to basically be grouped with that icon inside the link. And 
we're going to hide that text to visible like users and to cited users. And then for screen readers, it's going to announce that hidden text. So in order to do that, what you're going to want to do is right click your icon that you've added now uh, in the structure panels. Well, I guess you could do it either way uh, and wrap it with a div. Okay. Wrap with div. Yep. And that div is going to effectively be your link. So we're going to turn that into the link by going to HTML tag right there and choosing A. Okay, right there. Yep. A link, there we go. Yep. And then um, it's going to ask you for your destination. So in that drop down up there, uh, external yeah. URL, just put a pound sign for right yeah. now. It's fine. That makes it a real link. But now that you've wrapped it and that you've created that link, so the link is in, or the icon is inside of a link, you can now hit the plus sign and add a text element in there. So I'll show you how to do hidden text. Okay. Uh, right here? Yep. Or, yeah. 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 And just add a text element, basic, basic. text. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, well, so where does that pencil go? What is that? Like edit, edit the contact info or something? Yeah, it's a, it's a WooCommerce site. So it just goes like my account basically. And so okay. they can edit this piece. So type in edit account info in that. Like we're just going to describe what this link is doing. Okay. And then you can make that a span. Okay. And now put the class hidden accessible on it. Up here. Yep. And this is a ACSS. This is an ACSS class. What is that? What does that do though? Like, is so, it just, does it just do what it did? Like just hides it and makes it. It does. Yeah. It hides it to anybody who is just viewing the page as normal. Nobody's going to know that that text is there. But if you go look in the DOM, like you go look in the code, that text is sitting right next to that icon inside the wrapper. And so just naturally, when you use a keyboard to focus on the link or a screen reader reads the link, it's going to read the text inside of that link, right? Okay. Um, and so now people using a screen reader know exactly what that icon is gonna do. If, if that text is not there, if we didn't do that step, it's not gonna, they're not gonna know what that link does or, or anything about it, right? right. Um, now, automatic CSS puts that little A there to let you know that there's hidden accessibility text so that you in the builder can see it. But when we go to the front end, you're not going to see anything. Um, and then uh, we can start, let's go close that div. Okay. So under that div, um, mm -hmm. we are, which is still within our other div, yep. we are going to put the second line, which is actually your email address or the person's email address. So just another basic text element there. And just call, just label that email address because it it is what it is. So that one's easy. Okay. Now let's go into the website's wrapper. We'll come back to that div in just a minute that we didn't label. Uh, so this one is going to be just three text lines, more or less. So just text, text, text. Okay. And technically, this is a like I had this as basic, and then this is actually uh, those are actually queried mm -hmm. from the thing. So I mean, it's like a relationship query. Okay. Um, but you know, how so you would probably just need there. one of them and then loop them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can just put one for now. It's fine. Hit that. All right. And then, so the, uh, I would do uh, heading that basic text, call that a heading, but we'll talk this through in just a minute when we auto BIM it. Cause I want to, cause this is how people are probably going to do it. And then we'll see the issue they run into. Okay. Uh, and then that's just gonna be called website address or just, yeah, just say website. Or you, I would just say URL, actually. It's like the shortest way to name that. Okay. All right. Um, so what you've just done is just going through, like it looks like an absolute mess up there. But what you've done is put every actual element that you need inside that box. And so now you're ready to style. But before you style anything, you should just auto BIM it. And the good news is we did almost all of the auto BIM work already by just naming things properly in your structure panel uh, with, with one caveat, right? So go click uh, auto BIM on hello card up there. Got it. Okay. So we'll do this. All right, good. So now at this point, you want to check your classes because you are going to run into issues. See how you have hello card header. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you, well, you've effectively named this other thing name, right? Hello card name, but that was actually a heading. Let's say you had put a heading on that too. You would have hello card heading there. And if you scroll down, there's another hello card heading, right? And this, this is where you can make mistakes with BIMs. So you want to, you want to make sure you've named things correctly. So I'll kind of show you, let's start at the top and let's go through it. Okay. So name is fine. Intro is fine. Those are unique elements. The body wrapper is fine. That's a unique element. 
Now we have this div that we didn't name. We definitely need to name that. Um, and it was the, that is the wrapper on your contact info, right? So you have your body wrapper, you have your div and the basic text, and then the div next to that, and then the email address under that. Okay. So I would call that div. Um, let's just say contact wrapper. This one here. Yeah. And then a dash, right? right. Yeah. And then that text basic. Let's call that uh, contact info. And then the div right there is the wrapper for your icon. So just call that like icon wrapper. Is there ever a reason why you would, why you like, instead of just like, this is contact wrapper, but instead of saying contact info, you just say info. Is there like a reason you'd choose to, to, to say kind of like the, yeah, because you want to, you want a clue as to the context of, of where this thing is. Like, in fact, um, this icon wrapper that we just did is not going to be a good name because if you look down by your websites, you have another icon down there. Uh, and now there's two different kinds of icons in this card. So we need to know which one is which. So I would call this the contact icon wrapper. Okay because it's within the contact wrapper. So it makes sense that it's the contact icon wrapper. Then the next thing down is the contact icon. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad idea to, to, to repeat the, the contact. Right. Yeah. Picture. No, you want to, because that's okay. what all BIM is. Like that's why the whole stem, the whole original block class is being repeated. Hello card, hello card. Cause these all belong to hello card. So you use the same concept within, because there's no multi-level BIM. There's no, hello card, double underscore, contact wrapper, double underscore. There's no elements of elements of elements, right? Um, so the way that you do that is just right by repeating the name of the element in the actual element class. So hello card, contact icon, hello card, contact label. And you, or you could you, say contact icon label. Okay, probably, but you would, you would never write this as, these are the class names, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and we're talking specifically about the element portion of the class yes. name because the first part is the block. But would yeah. you ever write when we were doing all that stuff though, would you ever say contact icon label or is that just too much going on here as a label? Like no, you're what doing we're this actually what we're actually going to do because we have sync labels down there. Okay. So these changes that we're making right now are actually going to get carried over to our structure panel for us automatically. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So hmm. we we kind of did the bulk of the work initially, but now we're refining what we did. And when we refine it, it's going to carry over. Love it. Um, so now hello card uh, email address is fine. Cause there's only one email address in the thing. So everybody knows what that is. Um, the website's wrapper. And then I would say the, uh, that's a, a website's wrapper, a website's heading. Okay. And then you had a URL, which we're going to need a URL icon for as well. But I would say website URL, let's call that a website URL. Okay. So it's kind of, um, it's almost like SEO, right? SEO is better when you're specific with your keywords versus when you're super generic. Same thing with BIM. If you're just specific with your names, it tends to work out better than if you're too generic with your names. Um, so like website URL better than just URL, right? Um, okay. So now we're having synced labels and we're going to apply classes. Um, and then when you hit apply, it's going to map that to the side over there. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, there it fixed our structure panel for us. Everything is more specifically named. Uh, and then, you know, there's, you can obviously, there's going to be personal preference and how all of this stuff is named. The important part is that everything has a unique class. Everything is perfect. It's like within the BEM methodology, right? And so now all of our styling can be done and we're safe and we have one single source of truth. Whether we really, really, really like the name we chose or don't really like that, that's the least of our concerns at this point. Because remember, people are coming from ID level styling on everything. They have no global control of anything. Like the fact that, you know, we used a plural instead of singular in the name, like that's just, you know, nitpicking at that point, right? Uh, we've done the bulk of the work. So now we can, we can actually start styling that thing. Um, and so in your notice, you know, I would go, I would start the block level. So I'd go up to hello card and just start there. And the first thing that I, well, actually what I would do is with content because I hate seeing the, here goes your text and all of that. It doesn't, it's hard to start to visualize how this comes together. 
So I would put hello in that first one. Well, technically this one, right? Or yeah, that one right there. Yep. yep. And then put your name in the in the actual heading. Yep. And then just I'll just let you yeah just fill in all of the actual content. Cool. Um, so the next thing we want to do is get our HTML tags fixed up before we go on. So um, the URL, are those going to be linked up or are they just printed URLs? Uh, they, they, they don't, yeah, they don't have a link. They're just, uh, well, okay, mm, cool. yeah, that's fine. Just make them spans then. So we don't want everything to be a div that's especially just text. Um, typically it's just going to be, it's either going to be a paragraph or a span. A URL is not really a paragraph. So I would go how, span. How do you, how do you, yeah, how do you decide on that? Because this is again something that I have no, yeah, totally not, different over there. I wouldn't say there's like a, a completely black and white distinction, right? Um, but I I just use it in the context of like a book. You know, we know what paragraphs of content are in a book, and then we know what like little aside kind of things are. Um, and I just use spans on those. It, a span basically doesn't have any any real semantic value. And on uh, every text, you have you set that every single text you set either span, yeah. span or paragraph fair yeah a div that. technically is a container right so it's um something that things go in so it does to me it doesn't make sense that text is a using a container tag uh so a span is an, an, an and then you could get into a situation where we're talking about inline tags versus block tags and, and that kind of stuff like a div is a block tag a span is an inline tag uh so it's more appropriate for text to have span tags on it in my opinion okay um okay so then we're going to same thing on go to websites heading which is not really a heading um uh, but it's it's you know the heading to the the urls here um you can change that to span okay and then the email address uh not going to be linked up or is going to be linked up probably not yeah okay so that can be a span the contact info next to the pin that can be a span that already is cool. The hello at the top can probably be a span. I mean, there's not really, there you go. Okay. If you put like a little intro for the person in there or like a little bio snippet or something like that, that's an obvious like paragraph situation. Okay. Uh, what's the heading level on the, on your name? You got um, H3. Yeah. Currently H3. Yeah. I don't know. If okay. Technically and we're, we're working. Maybe. Yeah, well, we're working within a section, right? So a section has to have a H2 in it. Um, now, it's are you going to put a heading above the cards? If you're not, then these need to be H2s. But if you are, then these become H3s. Gotcha. Um, okay, so now we're, we're ready to rock and roll with any other styling. Now, we could stop here if we don't want to just do the basic styling, the sub, if you have other questions. But we did the general structure of like, all right, here's how we add everything. Here's how we name everything. Here's how we auto BIM it. It's up to you if you want to continue with the actual styling portion of it, or if there's another question you want to you want to move on to. I'm just looking down here as an example, like so. We we kind of have our blocks, like we have this. This is our finished product, right? So this is a block yep. up here that we created. This is a block. This is a block. Um, are we putting? Can't remember how I did it down here. Are we putting gapping? Because I think I think I that's kind of what I did was like auto gapping or something somehow. I don't I don't even. 100% no, but like, how are you creating the gaps? Like kind of in that, in that piece. So because, since we did effectively group, 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 all you have mm -hmm. to do is click hello card mm -hmm. and put whatever gap you want. Now activate the class at the top before you do it. Always then, forget to do that. Yep. And then row gap is now it, that looks a little bit more than content gap. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Maybe you like could use, calc. you could use a calc for sure. Um, okay. Like uh, calc, and then I don't know, like one point five maybe or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay, so then you've got uh, go click on your middle group there, because those things are next to each other. And it'll help us visualize if they're actually below each other. Uh, so click on the contact wrapper portion of it. Some of these we made, we use divs. Yep. And see how the display is set to block. Mm -hmm. This is a tricky thing with like page builders where brick sets everything to flex by default, except for divs. So if you use a div, it's going to be display block. And that's going to be the only thing that's display block. Well, it turns out that elements inside flex containers behave differently than they typically would than their normal behavior is. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're seeing these things go side by side uh, because they're spans. So they're inline elements. 
Whereas down below there, the spans did not go side by side because they're in a flex container. So um, just set this to display flex. That's really, that's like probably is what is most confusing to beginners with flex box stuff. Uh, and then set the direction to column. Uh, right yep. Okay. And then you could set, you don't really have to set the width at that point. Um, now there's a contact, um, there's another container in there with contact info in it, I believe. Contact info, okay. Uh, that heading right there, let me see down here. Okay, so you had your link next to it. Um, we all, Let's make that icon smaller too, because I hate the fact that it's a giant star and that's nothing like what we have okay. down below. So we can change it, I'll change it real quick to this pencil as well. That's good. There you go. Okay. And then, so now here's the thing with icons. Let's, yeah, let's, let's talk through this. This is only because bricks didn't do this properly. So this is not like how, how you would normally have to do this. And I'm sure bricks will fix this at some point. So somebody watching in the future, this may not be necessary anymore, but bricks does not respect classes on icons. Okay. It treats them all like you're styling at the ID level. So there's a workaround for this, right? So activate the class and um click on the okay we're using an icon library that's another thing is svgs are going to behave differently versus icon library icons uh, but size we're going to replace with what's called a locally scoped variable and that's going to be called icon size so we're just going to go double dash icon size hit enter that'll auto var it dash size yep and then go to the color and let's make sure that, uh, just choose any color. You just wanna make sure it's actually, cause, okay, good. Um, so replace that var black with icon color. Okay. So icon dash color. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is go to your style tag up there and go to custom CSS. And we're gonna do the root selector. And then we're gonna define those locally scoped variables. Uh, and by the way, a little shortcut, you can, um, yeah, delete that real quick. Always seen you do this. I'm excited to hear yeah, this. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I do it by like, I don't even do it by memory. It's like uh, my muscle memory. R tab, sorry, R tab. R tab. There wow. you go. I was always wondering, how did you type root that fast? <laughs> yeah. Apparently it wasn't. So just do double dash and then icon size, icon dash size. And then now you can put whatever you want as the value. Um, so you could use a font size from automatic CSS, like text L you could use, um, like this, if you want that icon to be the same size as the text, maybe try text M and see if that works. Okay. Is it, uh, it's is double it dash, dash? Uh, double dash text M and then do the semicolon. Once you have the double dashes in there. Got it. Just like this. Yeah, perfect. Yep. All right. Now just do one for icon color. And it looks like that's your action color, which is going to stay that anyway, but we still need to make these. So double dash action. action. Yep. Oops. Okay. Now um, I would hit save and like commit all of that. All right. Now we need to get the contact pencil uh, next to the contact info up there. And yes, we need it to be... So the contact info actually, where's where, click on contact wrapper here. Okay, we're one wrapper short. So we need to wrap contact info with a, a, a block. Awesome. You saw the extra work we had to do with div to change it to flex and all that. That's why mm -hmm. I use blocks primarily. Is there, is, there a re yeah, is there a reason then that you would, I mean, obviously there's a million reasons, but like, like where we just like, what's, do you, you mainly use blocks then? Yes. Are... Yes. I mainly use blocks. Um, okay. and I, I probably would recommend the beginners stick to blocks because the, the div thing not being flex is going to throw them off like a ton. Um, so I would just, if you stick to blocks, they're going to behave the same in all scenarios and it's going to be a lot easier for you. Okay. Um, okay. So the contact info, the contact icon wrapper needs to be in that block with the contact info. Oh, we got to put this yeah, contact drag that in right uh, at the same level as contact info. Yeah. There we go. And that should put those side by side. Go to that 
block right there. Good. And display. Uh, so the flex is column by default. We're just going to want to switch this to row, but we're going to need to add a class to it real quick because we forgot it initially. Yeah, this is this is another thing. Yeah. So like this is a good example. So we yep. we thought we had all our structure. Obviously, yep. you know, happens. So yep. yeah, what is the absolute best workflow for this? So the absolute best workflow is the, don't go back to auto BIM territory. Don't go, just literally write the class right there. So just go hello card, double underscore. Uh, or yeah, first you can name right. it in the structure panel. That's fine. Whatever you want to do first. Okay. What, what do you um, think so, we should name this one? So I would call this, um, so we, we named the other one contact info down there uh, and click on that contact info. That's like the label. Yeah, so I would change that to contact info label. Okay. So here's how we can edit our, our little mistake here, right? Yep. Contact info label. Now edit the name of that class to contact info label. Right here. Yep. This is what's great about bricks is being able to make these adjustments after the fact. And now that new block that we made is the contact info block. Got it. And now there's going to be no conflicts because we already renamed the other class. So the class we're about to give it no longer exists. So this is going to be hello card, double underscore. Okay. And this and then, is going to be uh, contact info, okay. which you can verify right there. See, it's not auto suggesting it does not exist, even though it used to exist. It doesn't anymore. Now you can put it on this thing safely. Boom. And now flex row is going to put those things next to each other. Love it. And then you do a little gap. And here's the thing you need a you need like a barely there gap you know you don't have to over engineer this by going with con uh, content gaps or anything like that just go like 0.5 m you know like half an m like if that does the trick hey that's all we need you know we don't have to use tokens for everything um and then same thing is in that contact wrapper now or in contact info whatever the yeah right there you could put a little gap in there now here's what i would recommend people think about too in these kind of scenarios there is margins that can obviously contribute to spacing. There's paddings that can contribute to spacing. There's gaps that can contribute to spacing. The one thing that contributes to spacing that beginners always forget is line height, okay? And this is a situation where none of these lines it, it need line height, none of them, but they all have it by default because they're all body text. They all have line height by default. So. I, what I would do to be the most efficient way to do this possible is click on the parent element. So hello card. Even though all those things are in their own little containers and wrappers, line height is something that inherits down through any other child uh, containers. So yeah, you can just apply line height of like one here and see how everything just tightens up. Now, when you go put gaps in, you're putting true gaps because there's nothing else contributing to the spacing. Whereas line height was just contributing invisible spacing that we didn't even really notice. Um, so now I would go into your header and now you're free to use your gap to get the perfect spacing that you want in, in here. Do you, do, you, do you find though that like, there's like you just said, there's a lot of things contributing to that. Is mm -hmm. there any, like what, what value does line height bring in most circumstances though? Like as an example here. Oh, so yeah. Well, in this example, it contributes nothing, like, but right. problems, right? Mm -hmm. It just contributes extra spacing that you can't get rid of. There's no, like, you can't go negative gap. Like, if the line height is creating spacing you don't want, you just, you have to get rid of the line height. That's what's, mm -hmm. that's the thing that's contributing it, right? So you look at a scenario like this and go, we don't need any line height in this scenario. I want to control the spacing with purely with gaps, right? Um, or if somebody wants, the reason you wouldn't want to do it with margin is because you have to apply a margin either programmatically or you have to apply a margin to every single element. Gap is far more efficient, right? right. Um, so you get rid of the line height. Now you're free to use the gaps. But if you're in a multi-paragraph or multi-line text situation, now you need the line height because that's what's going to be the space between lines of items in a scenario where gap cannot reach into that. A gap can't reach inside a paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. uh, only line height can do that. So that's where you want the line height. In this situation, these are all individual elements. You don't need the line height here. Got it. And again, here, we, what, what can we do? I mean, you could do content gap divided by two. You could do 0.5 M. It's really up to you um, at this point. If you want everything tied into the content spacing system, then I would just do a content gap divided by two. 
And the easiest way to do it is um, like if you select the token, you can copy, then you can write a calc and all this other stuff. Uh, or actually just let's see if it works. Uh, just put a slash two after that. Without uh, do it without spaces. Without spaces? Yeah. So like that. Um, or I'm sorry, with with spaces. Yeah. That's my dyslexia going. And then hit enter. There you, there you go. go. Now you have the calc. Love that. Love that. Um, all right, so now I would do the exact, uh, let's put your order one or order minus one on the hello. Okay. On the hello there. Yep. And on the class, we got a, that's the, that's the, Every some people are like, what Every I would time. actually uh, prefer is for Bricks to realize, hey, if there's only one class on this element, let's just select that class by default. Yeah, you know? I would, I would upvote that. Yeah, if there's multiple classes, then it obviously doesn't know which one we're gonna want, but and then, okay, just select the ID. But if there's only one class there, let's just go ahead and auto select that for the user. Um, okay, then the contact wrapper, contact info, whichever one is actually wrapping those. Okay, just throw, I would throw the same gap on on there. So, that row, content gap, and then, oops, there you go. And then the next one. Now there's another way that you could do this programmatically once, so you don't have to do it on every single uh, item, but it's probably, unless you want to go there and then we can, we can go there, but. How much time you got, Kevin? I'm, I'm down for whatever, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so now let's just do the whole padding border situation. And I think we're, we're where we need to be. Um, so yeah, like I, this is just a normal, just token situation. So go to style padding and select your token. This medium. What yeah, do you I, would go, I would go L. L. Okay. Yeah. Then, like a little bit more breathing room. And then um, let's go to border. Now I know down here you made a utility class for your border, right? I did. That's probably not is the right the way concept, to Is the concept that it's like pretty much everything on the site is going to have the same border style? Uh, I mean, at least on the dashboard, but yeah, I mean, I'm not a designer, so I figured like, yeah, that just, that's stupidly simple to just do that. So if I, yeah, if this, I had those types of things. This is what we've been contemplating in ACSS adding, because you know, we've added like BG dark, BG light, these contextual kind of like things. I think there needs to be one for border. Like a lot of sites just have a border style that they stick to and they use it for pretty much everything. Right. Or you could have a border light border dark situation um, where we would probably call this like a border dark because it's a, uh, it's a dark color. So um, the way that I would tend to approach this is um, I, the thing is, is bricks lacks a global CSS thing. And I'm about to say like, well, uh, ACSS 3.0 fixes this for you, mm -hmm. um, you know, but nobody knows that exists yet. So uh, what I would, what you're going to need to do, Bricks, and this is why Bricks just, it, it, all page builders make this a little bit frustrating. We're going to have to save what we're doing here and we're going to have to go to a magic area. Okay. Magic so area. I would, in a new tab, just go, yeah, go to admin of this site okay. and then go to appearance. And this is, you know, if you don't want to add a WP code box type situation or wherever, uh, go to theme file editor. Okay. Yeah. We're just going to go does, to the child theme. Yeah. Does this, does this, um, what's the difference between th like doing this in the child theme here on yeah. the, on the style versus doing their, isn't there like a custom code section in this bricks? Um, it, it's only page level. It's not global. Like, so you can write CSS for that page. Yeah. Like custom CSS or you're talking about this section right here. Yeah. Oh, custom CSS. Um, yeah, you could do it here as well, but this is not a code editor. Like I hear you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. ne neither is the other one. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. both of them suck. Right. But, but to, but to this one is global. You could do it here though. Yes. Theme style, obviously in the, in the, in the theme editor is global, but I know what you're talking about. You're talking about if you go here and that's you go page, up yeah. top, yeah. that's just the page. Okay. Got yes. It. Perfect. Uh, I prefer down here cause this is actually, you know, a style sheet. It's not being injected anywhere and uh, kind of like what it's for. Um, so now you're going to do uh, colon root and then you're going to open your brackets after that. And there's really two ways to do this. You can, it's how granular do you want to be, but you could literally just write double dash border colon and put the entire border, uh, style that you want. So let's say 1.5 pixels. 
solid, and then let's choose a token. So let's go var, and I look like you had, let's go like neutral, trans, 30 or something. Okay. We can always adjust this. Okay, really rough on this here. Is it, uh, um, is it do, I have, do I have dash before var? No, no, you're good. No. So var, and then parentheses. Yep. And then in there, neutral, da, uh, neutral, dash, trans, dash. And we'll just start with 30 and see cool. what that does. And then semicolon on the end. And so now you've just created a token that basically houses, basically doing what your utility class did. But the difference is this is something we can assign to a custom class where that utility class is just being littered all throughout your website. This token is going to be assigned to any custom class that needs it, right? So now that we've saved, we can actually go back to the builder. You're going to have to refresh the builder so it has access to that style sheet. And let's just try using the token. So now you're literally going to go to the border. And I think the way, see if Bricks compl complicates this. Uh, border, border, good. Um, it does complicate it because they give you all these granular inputs. And we have like one, actually, there's, I think there's a workaround for this. Uh, there's a little, there's a little back door. Okay. Click on color. Oh, okay. It's a stupid, it's a stupid thing to cl click raw. Oh, I see. And then uh, just type border. <laughs> and it's going to in inject that where we need it. With hit this, enter. just like this? Yeah, hit enter to wrap it. There you go. And save and refresh and see if we get what we want. This works for box shadows. I've actually never tried it with border, but I would think. I think, unless... I've, I think I've seen you do it before, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, it doesn't look like Let's try it in custom CSS and just see if it's working. Okay. See if our token's working. So just go root and then border, you know, border colon. Var border. Look at that, I'm learning. Go and then close it and save. And let's refresh on the front end. You have to refresh because it's pulling from like kind of like the external thing normally? Or? No, it should. Um, I don't know why it's not working. You don't have any caching or anything, right? Mm, Turned on. I don't think so. If caching could be a problem with that child theme style sheet. Let me let me share real quick. Um, okay. I'll stop your sharing. Let me go. We'll just do a quick test on does this yep. even does this concept even work? Uh, so we'll go to share screen, desktop one. Okay, here we go. I want, I'm just going to quickly go like 300 pixels and 300 pixels. We have a box and we'll say box. Okay. And then we'll try this this way first. So let's go to page settings. Let's go to custom code. Awesome. Uh, let's go to root. Go to border one pixel solid red. Okay. So we should have a token called border that we can use. I'm going to start in custom CSS root border is border. Okay. Save refresh. Not there. Oh, no, it is there. Okay. Hmm. So inspect. There's our border and it's mapped to that value right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take it and now we'll actually. Yeah, no, I want to test this out too. I want to go to this border area and I want to see if we can get it to work through the back door. Border, save. Refresh. Back door is not working. Okay, box. Box, here we go. Got to do it down here. Border is equal to border. Save. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to let you share again. So I've, we've proven the concept of the token itself. Okay. Is there um, just semantic question? Is there a difference between variables and tokens? No, it's, um, okay. they're actually neither, neither term is correct. Uh, they're called custom properties in CSS. Okay. Um, and so custom properties is two words and it's long. Uh, and then nobody knows what they are. Like you, like, it's like, okay, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, everybody knows what a variable is across, you know, JavaScript, PHP, CSS, like 
a variable is a variable. And then a token is just a cute name for it. Like we're tokenizing something. Uh, I use, I use tokens though, because non coders, um, I feel like, you know, the name makes sense to them a little bit better. Certainly. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you want to necessarily cover, but I do have one other random question, which may be, yeah. I don't know, deeper or not, but I, I've seen attributes. I think we, you, I know you've talked about them. Um, we've talked about them, everything, but like, how does this start to play into different things? Um, and this says attributes, but again, the whole naming convention thing is a, is a big, mm -hmm. is a big deal. Like we just talked about, I've heard the term data attributes. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you just said custom, custom properties, like, I don't know, high level on like when, and if it makes sense to use like literally just this section of bricks and kind of like, yeah, well, that is actually, um, so it's like to help people understand, you know, like every there's a lot of things that you've already done or attributes, right? Like classes, for example, okay. like, um, go add just in that other box over there to the right hand side. Yeah. Throw a text element in there. We'll just play around a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to add attribute, add attribute class. And then the value do your little, uh, border thing that, uh, what was it called? Thin border that, okay. that utility class you made. And then hit save and go to the front end. Oh, cool. It's got your thin border, right? So, so why would we do that? Right. Like what's you, well, you wouldn't want to, but like go, go back to the front end and inspect it just to show people what it did. And this will actually help when you're like, maybe when you start to get into like, you know, JavaScript and things like that, understanding what, what's going on here. Um, so that div has a class of thin border, just like you had applied it in the class area, right? Cause that, cause the class that is an attribute. So now there's, there's different types of attributes, right? So now go, go back to the text in the builder and add another attribute. We'll just see it, what it, what it's doing to build the HTML. So do aria dash label and do, um, you know, test label or something. Okay, save, go back, inspect on the front end. And now we'll see right over there, div class equals thin border, aria label equals test label. And so anything that we put in there, now we can do a data attribute, for example. So go back and do uh, data, uh, do data label color. And you can just make these, uh, some you can make up and some you can't mm -hmm. make up. Class you can't make up, like class is a, it's a, fixed attribute, right? right? Aria label, fixed attribute. Data label color, I just made it up. So make it uh, red, okay? okay? Now go to, yeah, uh, go to custom CSS. Okay, oops. And do, uh, now we're gonna use brackets. So open a square bracket, data label color equals, uh, inside, uh, inside, yeah, inside. Yeah. Yep. Equals quote red single or double double. Okay. okay. And then, um, outside now open your normal, your normal curly brackets and color red. Now the confusing part for beginners is, and we'll see if this works on the front end, hit save and go on the front end and check it out. Okay, so it's another way to to target things, um, and then data attributes can accept dynamic data, right? So you can, if you're doing something with custom fields and you need to pass that value into a data attribute and then do something with it, um, like setting brand colors on things, um, like different cards. I did one while, a while back where the client wanted. Uh, it was an e-commerce site and they were selling vapes or whatever. And it's like, if this brand of vapes, we want the cards to be green and this van, brand of vapes. Okay. So I passed the brand name to the cards mm -hmm. in a data attribute. And then I did that statement that we just did, right. Targeting the data attribute. And I just set the background color based on those. Um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. JavaScript uses data attributes to target things a lot. Uh, so it's important to know that these things exist and that we can use them, but it also, you know, I, I think most people, most beginners don't know that like class, for example, is an attribute, right? So 
Um, they just look at things like ARIA labels and maybe data attributes and stuff like that. But really all those things in the line, the ID, all that stuff is an attribute. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. So then there's particular use cases where like, I mean, you could, I guess, technically then do a lot of this stuff, like you said, with attributes, but there's just no reason to because it's yeah, already- Yeah, because the current UI makes it easier yeah. to do it another way. Um, but there, this is kind of a back door. If you need something in the HTML, like and you need an attribute that the builder doesn't offer you, but the builder offers custom attributes, you can literally do anything you want, right? Okay. Um, so it's, it's uh, and that, that's, that's another reason why it would be critical of something like uh, Gutenberg, for example. Like there's no attributes. You can't add attributes to elements in Gutenberg. So like if I need to add those ARIA labels, I mean, what, are, what are we going to do here? Now I got to custom code my own block and all that other stuff, right? Um, I don't know that Elementor, I haven't been spent enough time with it. I don't know if Elementor allows you to add custom attributes to things. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even really know what a custom attribute was back then. So I'm not, right. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it does seem like if you were building a page builder, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, uh, at least a way to, like you said, give people the option to be able to do anything. Like if you're right. like, literally, if you just launched one tomorrow, like you could have only 20% of the UI complete, not complete, but you know, 20% mm -hmm. of the options. And then as long yeah. as you have custom attributes, you, it's like, yeah, it's not easy, but at least you can do it, you know, through the, right. it's kind of the way that I'm understanding it to some degree. Yeah. So, well, yeah. and, and, you know, with, with this, a lot of people I think will watch this and be like, I'm never going to do any of that. And it's like, well, actually you are like, as you, as you progress and get better and better, you are going to do like, just like I said, uh, with the example of they wanted different brand colors on the different vape products or whatever, right? There's a there's other ways to do that, but they're really like janky ways. It's, it's like a, you know, duct tape together, a bunch of nonsense that people will do when they really should have used the data attribute. They should have known what a data attribute was past mm -hmm. that value dynamically, where's my phone? There we go, I'm gonna turn that off. Pass that value dynamically into the data attribute and use the data attribute to target and style. That's what should have been done there, but because they don't know about data attributes or they're using a builder that doesn't let them, they gotta do some insane, crazy juggling, you know, flaming hoops workaround that ends up being a maintainability nightmare later on. Anything else you think we should cover? I think we covered a lot of my- I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, right that's it for, uh, I think episode number one, and then maybe we'll do, We'll see how we'll see what people think, you know, how helpful yeah. they feel this was. And uh, maybe we'll do some follow up episodes. Sweet. I think Appreciate it's a lot it, of it's a lot of little stuff that like I can't you can't cover in videos very well, like specific videos for things. It's um, it's just a lot of helpful kind of random stuff, I feel. Yeah, well, I'm obviously a noob, so I appreciate it, Kevin. Hopefully that uh, my perspective on this, kind of like the back and forth, hopefully it, it helps some people because uh, I know I got a lot of value out, uh, out of it. So thank yeah, you again, man. Sure. How are you uh, liking the transition from Elementor thus far? Oh man, I mean, I'm pretty involved with the community, and uh, it's 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 there's there's a lot there. I mean, just the last six months, it's been it's been fun. You know, watch your content, watch everybody yeah. else's, and getting involved. Um, the transition itself, I think, uh, at least for me, a hundred percent, no regrets whatsoever. And like I said, uh, maybe off camera um, or off the call here to you earlier it makes me feel more like a developer. I really enjoy like understanding how all this works. It can be definitely overwhelming. I understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But if you understand sections, containers, blocks, divs, I mean, this is a bit of a stretch, but I feel like if you got that down, you could be a software developer, like an mm -hmm. actual, like a, like an actual traditional web developer. So it kind of, to me, takes away the need. I'm still going to use page builders. Cause like the same reason right. you do, it's right. faster, it's more efficient, right. Right. but you actually understand the fundamentals. And if you understand the fundamentals, then that's extremely transferable to other things. Yeah. You know, it's, it's learning, it's learning buttons and, you know, whatever people decide to call other stuff, which is a conversation for a different time. But, <laughs> right. um, but, but, you know, it's your, I just, I don't know. I like, I like the knowledge. I, I really enjoy it. So it's been great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, this was fun. Uh, we'll put it up. We'll see what people think and we'll go from there. Sweet. Appreciate it coming again. Thank you right, so man. much. Thank you. See you guys.